So our last example is the integral from 2 to infinity of dx over x plus sine x. And again, because we have an impropriety at infinity, we're going to integrate from 2 to t of dx over x, sine, x plus sine x. And we would like just to do the integral as the next step. The problem is that the integral of 1 over x plus sine x is something very difficult, something we don't know how to do. So how do we handle this? Well, the way you want to think about this is to kind of ask yourself, what does 1 over x plus sine x look like? Now, I'm not asking for a detailed graph, but I'm asking you to think about what, um, how, how big 1 over x plus sine x can be. Well, x plus sine x, something I know here is that sine x is always between negative 1 and 1. So x plus sine x is always less than or equal to x plus 1. So 1 over x plus sine x, when you take 1 over something, it reverses the inequality. That's bigger than or equal to 1 over x plus 1. So this integral, whatever it is, is bigger than the integral from 2 to t of dx over x plus 1. And that's an easy integral to do. We can use u equals x plus 1. And so we'll get the natural log of x plus 1 evaluated from x equals 2 to x equals t. And that's the natural log of t plus 1 minus the natural log of 2 plus 1. And we want the limit as t goes to infinity. So this is the natural log of infinity, which is infinity, minus natural log of 3, which is just a finite number. So this diverges to infinity. However, that's, that was the integral of dx over x plus 1. We're actually trying to look at the integral of dx over x plus sine x. What we have learned, though, is that the integral from 2 to infinity of dx over x plus sine x, sine x, is bigger than or equal to the integral of from 2 to infinity of dx over x plus 1. And that, in turn, is infinity. So the, the area under this function is infinite. This is even bigger. So our integral If it's even bigger than an infinite value, it diverges to infinity 2. So there's a couple points I want to make about this. Um, one is that in order to, for this kind of argument to work, the inequality has to go the right way. If this inequality had turned out to go the other way, if this had been an, a greater than or equal to, let me write this in red so that you can show that you, you can see that this is not the actual value. So what if that had been greater than or equal to? That would have made this inequality less than or equal to. And then in turn, this inequality would have been less than or equal to. And this inequality would have been less than or equal to. Then we would have had something less than or equal to an infinite area and that's not something that we can say is finite or infinite. If something is less than infinity, well, it might be finite, but it could still be infinite. So it's very important for this, for this kind of argument to work is that the inequality must go the correct way. The, uh, the second point I wanted to make about this is that when you use this kind of 
argument, you're not figuring out the exact value of the integral. So this kind of argument will never tell you the exact value of the integral, even when you get an integral that converges. So this never tells you the exact value of the integral. Now in this problem, we got kind of lucky because we weren't asked what the exact value of the integral was. We were only asked determine whether the integral converges or diverges. So in that sense, that's sometimes a tip-off that you want to use this kind of comparison idea. Um, if the problem doesn't ask you what the exact value is, if it just asks you whether it converges or diverges, that's a little bit of a hint that you might want to use this idea of comparison.